Hey guys, Copper Dog back for this, the third in my series of video tutorials aimed at the Yamaha FZ1 second generation. Now, this includes the 2006 through the 2010 models. In this episode, we're going to take a look at one of the performance modifications aimed at your bike's exhaust system, namely removing the stock exhaust and installing the slip-on. But I'm also going to show you how to gut the header cat and remove the exit cables that connect the servo motor from behind the bike's fuel tank all the way down to the servo valve located here on the stock muffler. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Before taking the stock muffler off, we have to unhook and remove the exit cables that connect the valve on the muffler to the servo motor located just under the front seat. Begin by removing the passenger seat or rear seat cowl and the driver's seat from the motorcycle. From the right side of the bike, use a 5mm hex driver to remove the exit valve cover located at the front of the stock muffler. Use a 10mm open end wrench to loosen the nuts that secure the lower ends of the exit cables to the cable stay bracket at the front of the assembly. Now pull the cable away from the bracket and release the ends of the cable from the actuation pulley as shown. Follow the cables as they run up towards the servo motor. There is a single cable tie that secures the cables to the other wiring. Cut the cable tie and remove it. At the top, pull back the rubberized heat shield that covers the servo motor and secure it to the fuel tank as shown with a piece of masking tape. The servo motor assembly itself is held in position with a single 12 millimeter nut. Use a socket with a short extension to remove this nut. The servo motor assembly can now be pulled away from the mount to allow access to the cover. The heat shield can also be removed at this time. Remove the two Phillips head screws that hold the cover in place, then remove the cover. The ends of the cables can be removed from the actuation wheel in the same manner as before, and the cables can be pulled from their mount. In order to keep the bike from having an error code, you'll need to keep the servo motor plugged into the bike's wiring, so we're going to go ahead and remount it. Reinstall the servo cover. Put the heat shield back in place and place the servo assembly back into position on its mount and tighten the 12 millimeter nut, holding it secure. Now, fold the rubberized heat shield down over the servo assembly as before. You may also go ahead and reinstall the driver's seat and rear seat cowl. Once the exit cables are free, they can be removed from the bike by pulling them out from the bottom as shown. After removing the cables, you may want to store them away just in case you ever want to return the bike back to stock. Use a 12 mm socket or wrench to just loosen the nut on the forward muffler clamp. Now, remove the 14 mm nut and bolt that secures the rear of the muffler to the passenger foot peg mount. The stock muffler can now be worked loose and removed. Wow, I can't believe they actually put something this heavy on one of our motorcycles, but I guess they do. Anyway, so you've got the stock muffler off, you've got the exit cables out of the bike, all that's left is gutting the header cat and putting on the slip-on. When we get back, I'm going to show you how to do it. We'll be right back. Hey guys, we're back and we're getting ready to gut the header cap, but before we do, I wanted to take a minute to show you what it is we're trying to accomplish. Now, filming down inside the header is kind of difficult, so I've come up with a demonstration model to act as a visual aid. When you first get your muffler off and look inside the header pipe, it's going to look kind of like this. What this is, 
The catalytic converter is a steel tube about two inches long, about two inches in diameter, and it's filled with a honeycomb material. This tube is then welded inside your header and will look like this. The steel tube here does not come out. When you're chiseling and everything, don't try to get between the header pipe and the steel tube, but rather you're just going to take out the material that's inside. So when you're done, you're going to try to look a little bit like this. Uh, there'll be some material around this area here. Don't worry about it. It's going to stay in there and it's going to be okay, but we're going to try to get it as smooth as we can. Let's get started. Okay, here it is. With the muffler off, you can clearly see the catalytic converter material inside the header pipe, and if you look close enough, you can even see the steel ring we talked about. The primary tool you will need is a long 1 quarter to 3 8 inch drill bit. To begin, I drilled starter holes into the cat to get my spacing, then once I had them started, I drilled all the way through to the cat, which is about 2 inches deep. Make sure you don't drill too far into the header as you don't want to damage the O2 sensor which is just forward of the cat by an inch or so. Now use a long screwdriver or chisel to begin to break the cat into pieces. In no time you will begin to have chunks of the material that can be pulled free from the header. Continue to carefully chisel around the edges until you have nearly all of the material out of the header. Use a shop vac to get out any pieces that may have been dispersed up into the header and all the other dust particles left inside. Now before proceeding, you will want to make sure that all loose particles are out of the header pipe. To do this, roll the bike out into the open and simply start the motor. A few quick blips of the throttle, anything not attached is going to be ejected. Most slip-ons come with their own instructions, but they are all pretty much the same as my MIVV, so the steps for your slip-on will be similar. First, slide the mid-pipe into the header. Make sure that you have the forward clamp on the pipe, but do not tighten it yet in case you need to make adjustments. Trial fit the pipe and rear hanger into position, then install the mounting bolt to the foot peg mount, but do not tighten. Make sure you have clearance for the foot brake operation. Make any adjustments to the mid-pipe and slip-on position until the alignment is correct. When satisfied with the alignment, tighten the forward clamp and rear hanger bolt. Check that the connections are firm. On the MIVV, the muffler is secured to the mid-pipe via a small tension spring. Put it on there, that's it, and this job is done. Man, I just love that sound. You spend a little bit of time, you lose a lot of weight, you gain quite a bit of horsepower, and it looks fantastic. And did not mention the sound. I just love this MIVV. Anyway, that's all for this time. Next week, I'm going to have a new video coming out. It's going to be installing an air filter, modifying the airbox, putting in a PC3, using maps, the importance of going to a dyno, and a lot more. So until then, ride safe, wear your gear all the time, and we'll see you next time.